Well, hey, welcome back to Exploring Israel for Bible Study. I'm Jeff Baxter. I'm the Next Generation Pastor at Mission Hills Church in Littleton, Colorado. I'm so glad you chose to join me again. I want to zero in on one place today. It's called Bet Shean. Bet Shean is a city that's 6,000 years old. It's a significant city in Israel. This this place is, is amazing. If you go visit it, I'm going to show you some pictures here that will blow your mind and you're not going to fully capture how large the expansiveness of the city is, the details of it, what different civilizations over time, how they've taken care of it. Because let me, let me go to the Hebrew for just a minute. What does the word Beth Shion even mean? Well, Beth in Hebrew means house and Shion means rest. This is supposed to be a house of rest, this city. But I can tell you over 6,000 years, it has been nothing but a house of rest. It, it's amazing the wars and the famines and the earthquakes that have taken place here. Because the Egyptians, the Canaanites, the Philistines, the Assyrians, the Israelites, and the Romans have all owned this city at one time or another. Because it is a, it's a super highway where you had to go past Beth Shean, almost through Beth Shean, to get from north to south or south south to north north to south whatever those directions are and it, it's amazing how this is the place that everybody wanted to own and they were going to go to war to get it because it was so significant well the most significant story in the bible connected to bet Shean is back in the old testament the philistines have the israelites on the run and they're going to overtake them king saul is on the throne king david David is about to become king. And so Saul is pinned in, and the Philistines have him. 1 Samuel chapter 31, it says this, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead at Mount Gilbo. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons. So they've pinned him in. Verse 3, The, the fighting grew fierce around Saul and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. So Saul is going to die. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows, the Philistines, will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and he fell on it. And the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead. He too fell on his own sword and he died also. So they both committed suicide because they, didn't, they knew they were going to die and they didn't want the Philistines to get to them, so they fell on their swords. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. So the Philistines come, they discover the bodies of King Saul and his sons, and they take the bodies down to Bet-Shean and they hang them on the walls of Bet-Shean. Now in the middle of the night, let me fast forward to verse 8. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilbo. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor, and they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news that the, to the temple of their idols among their people. And they put his armor in the temple of the Ashtiras and fashioned his body to the wall of bet Shean. Then the people of Jabesh Gilead heard that the Philistines had done this to Saul. All their valiant men marched through the night to the Bet Shean, and they took down the bodies of Saul and his sons, and from the wall of Bet Shean, and went to Jabesh, where they burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under the a tamarack tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Oh my, this is what happened in Bet Shean as Saul and his sons were brought there and hung on the walls and they were, they were taken in the middle of the night and given a proper burial, actually. This place has rich history, Bet Shean. Um, the, the, let me fast forward. I actually believe, this is the bonus I, I wanted to provide for you today. I actually believe when Jesus was telling the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. He's been talking about a lost coin, lost sheep, and then he gets to lost people. And when he's telling the story of the lost son, and he said that the son went to his daddy and asked for his inheritance before his dad was even had died yet, which was an insult. 
and he said he ran off to a far off land. I believe it's possible that Beth Shean is the land that Jesus was referring to that his audience would have understood because Beth Shean was a Greek owned area at the time of Jesus that had a lot of pigs. And we know that Jews don't eat ham sandwiches or hang out with pigs. And so it would have been this far off land that had a lot of pigs because we know in the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 that he got so low as a Jewish son that he, he wanted to make money or be able to survive by caring for pigs. And he began to eat the food that the pigs were receiving. Is it possible that Bet Shean is that place where the prodigal son would have run off to, that far off land to get away from his dad and to run away? And the great story is obviously he came home and received by grace, the father received him by grace and brought him back into his household. And the, and the lost was now found. But I think it might have been Bet Shean that Jesus was talking about, which would be amazing if it was. So I hope it's been helpful to study Bet Shean today. I hope it's been encouraging to you. Until next time.